Oh, okay. Right. And so, he, he also, it would also be understood that we should be literally chopping off our arms and gouging out our eyes when we sin. But I don't see many Catholics walking around with peg legs and eye patches. So I'm not really sure how they, how they work that out, you know? This is where well, you don't understand that most pirates were Catholic. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, so here's, here's the thing is that, Thomas, let me steal man you for a bit here. The idea of transubstantiation is not the idea that the elements are the literal body and blood of Christ until they transubstantiate when you are partaking in the sacrament. Okay, yeah, so right. the idea that, right, so the idea is that when you partake of the sacrament, it becomes the literal body and blood of Christ. This is the teaching of transubstantiation. Did I get that correct, Thomas? Yes, indeed. Yes. This is the doctrine and of so, transubstantiation. Indeed. So, according, so now according, four... Look, according to baptized, you get this by tears. Well, yeah, 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 but who cares what heretics say? So, um... So there are there, there are four views on the Lord's Supper, what we call the Lord's Supper, what some call the Eucharist, whatever. It's all the same thing. Um, there's just different Latin translations. But so there is transubstantiation. There is the Lutheran doctrine of consubstantiation. Okay. There is the real presence, and there is the memorial view. And so in the Protestant Reformation, you had three. Um, competing uh, views of the Lord's Supper come up, and in the ancient Church, transubstantiation was not in, was not elucidated until the Fourth Lateran Council in twelve fifteen. Am I correct on that, Thomas? Yes. Good. Okay. Again, I don't want to I don't want to straw man anything here. So, um, so we have. Real presence, which is the, the view that I take, which is just that the literal presence of Jesus Christ is in the room when the Lord's Supper occurs, okay? And that his real presence is in the elements themselves, okay? Um, it is not that they turn into the literal body and blood, but that there is an ordinary means of grace that is granting grace to the participant that is a Christian, the memorial view was championed by Zwingli, who was another reformer who was a contemporary of Luther and Calvin. And his view was that, do this in remembrance of me. This is more of the Baptist view. So that there is a an idea of just simply doing this as a, a ritual remembrance. That there is no supernatural, spiritual, physical component. Now, Almost all of church history, that was rejected, um, because that was one of the views put forth by the Gnostics, um, that there is no physicality, because physicality was evil to the Gnostic, depending on what Gnostic you talk to. But the the third view, consubstantiation, was simply that it is the, the literal body and blood of Christ, but it is uh, not at the moment of partaking but it is simply, um, I'd have to read back up on this. There's a, there's a slight difference between con and trans, at any rate. Uh, I, mean, I believe it's it. with. I mean, I don't believe it literally turns into body and blood, but I, I mean, I would get around that to say the same way that, you know, when people say, the Bible says you sh shouldn't, uh, shouldn't sacrifice humans and blah, blah, blah. So why do you have Jesus, who you Christians say is a human, sacrificing himself? I'd say, well, that doesn't apply to God. Maybe there's a law that says, hey, don't sacrifice each other because that's reserved only for the one who will be your sacrifice. So, like, you know, it's uh, like if that's the reason, God is different. So if Jesus is saying, hey, take this, remember me, this is my body, this is my blood, blah, blah, blah. Unless you eat the flesh of man and drink his blood, you won't have any part in heaven. So I'd say, well, no, that could very well be God's rule for everyone. Like, don't drink blood, don't eat flesh because this is reserved for God. Like, that's why you can't eat flesh and drink blood because this is only for the body and blood of Christ. Anyways, I don't. I think it's all symbolic Dude, anyway. So that I would say, is some good reasoning, Nate, because that is exactly how Aquinas substantiates, instantiates transubstantiation. That is one of his actual arguments, man. 
That guy is the Maybe smartest it's... guy to ever have lived. Maybe it's because I'm the great pope. Oh, you're the great pope. Okay, yeah. But I mean, wouldn't you? Would you guys agree that Aquinas was probably the smartest guy to have ever lived? 